Daryl Tank. Glad you could join me. I want to be able to give you a little tip today. In this particular picture here, you'll notice that the mouth is obviously smiling. I think it is. But the corners turned down. And if you're not careful, you could have continued up and just tried to make it like a smiley face. And if you had done that, you might very well have lost the opportunity to capture even more, you know, accurately the character and personality of this individual. Let's just go ahead and sketch a little bit in here, just to kind of set the tone. And as we're drawing here, we'll cover a few other things. There's a capture a light tone in here just to kind of give this some content, context. We can kind of see where we're working. And I'm doing this with my 4H. Now, we need to have separation between these two lips. As you probably know, if you follow the five pencil technique, and if you haven't, make sure that you take the opportunity to go to fivepencilmethod.com and uh, take advantage of the free lessons. You can familiarize yourself with the technique. You'll know better what I'm referring to here. And it'll give you a chance to maybe uh, try out some new things. But one of the things that's very important in the five pencil technique is an edge to value. I need to have a separation between the two lips. And so it's real easy sometimes to go ahead and just be satisfied with a line between the two lips. But I want to dedicate that line. I'm going to have a clean edge and then I'm going to shade it this way. Because I want to show that that top lip is what's shading the bottom lip. In almost every case this works out very, very well, even though the bottom lip is always or usually fuller than the bottom or the top one. And so it comes out into the light and we notice a greater highlight. Just like on here, the greater highlight is on this bottom lip. But because we notice that, it's sometimes tempting not to think about the fact that the top lip is still overlapping. I get enough value on here, we can develop this corner. But this division in between is something I do not want to leave as a line. And even though it may be very thin, I can suggest that the top one again is shading the bottom one. Now I'm going to come up here and shade it up from that. Because the top lip has to have some value in it as well. But now I don't want it to get it confusing. I'm going to go up to my next pencil. Let's go up to the 2H. A little darker. And I'll reestablish the fact that this is the side that the shadow's on. This is the side of the line. Now as we come up here, usually when we go to a corner of the mouth, it gets a little darker. That's because the mouth is arced. It's arced like this. Like this. And the corners are pushed in. This is out in front. And the corners are pushed in, so we'll have it a little darker here. Now we want to go ahead and make sure that we're paying attention to the important thing I was talking about. And that is the fact that we don't just have a smiley face smile. Still want to, where there's a, a obvious separation between the two dimensions, we want to have that clean edge. And we want to put the shadow side on the right, on the proper side, even if we may not see it in, the, in our source. We still want to show that it's just shading down. So then when we get out here into how far do we go, it starts becoming a contour. And that would be soft on both sides. As it melds into the face, you'll find that most features, or an awful lot of them, just flow into other parts of the face. 
especially when you're talking about expressions, smiles, whether they're smiles or frowns or whatever it happens to be, they usually end up by flowing into another contour. And so they are no longer two separate dimensions. Now, normally I would go ahead and spend time building up all my values and I always start with the lightest pencil in the darkest place first and make sure that I have a, a, a good foundation and undercoating to give myself more saturations and it gives, my, it gives me the opportunity to put a little more value in the face than I might have been tempted before because this is dark enough to set it apart. Let's go ahead and use the HB and take this value up just a little bit more. We want the lips to just variegate into the regular skin, fade away, and then we can develop how much value we're going to have here to give an indication of the pigment of the lip. This is what I want you to pay attention to. The fact that sometimes, again, the smallest little thing that you may have missed may keep you from capturing the unique character of your subject. I look forward to sharing more and I hope you have fun drawing in the meantime.